This is just 1.1 practice problems. We're solving equations. And our goal for solving, what is our goal in solving equations? To isolate what? X. Isolate x, the variable. So in this first example, what am I going to do? Subtract 11 first. Good. Wait, hold on. Let me fix my pen here. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> Subtract 11. So I have 5x equals what? 25. Divide both sides by 5, and I get x equals 5. What can I do with 5? I can substitute it back in. I can put it back in and check. So 5 times 5 is plus 11. So we did that one right. Good. So what do I have here? <clears throat> Okay, so I have the exact same problem, but what do you guys notice? There's two X's. Where are they? They're on opposite sides. We want to get all of our X's on one side and all of our numbers to the other. Doesn't matter where you move. I personally like to move variables to the left-hand side. I just think they're supposed to be over there for whatever reason. So I'm going to subtract 3X from both sides. So I have a negative X and a negative 3X. Gives me what? No, we're combining. 4X, good equals 5, then what? Uh, subtract, the three. subtract the 3, great. So I have negative 4x equals 2, then what? Uh, negative, uh, divide both negative, sides by negative, negative 4, negative divide both sides by negative 4, five, five, right, 5 minus 3. So I have x equals uh, negative, one negative 1 half, good. Tell me, go. Are we, are we, do we have to check these or just? You can. Just, are any of them like no solution? They might be. <clears throat> Minus 12. Okay. Minus 12. Good, Hayden. So 3x equals 12 <coughs> divide by 3, and x equals 4. Four. Good. Good job, good job, good job. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Plus 7. So what's 42 plus 7? 49. So I have 5x equals 49. Then what? Divide both sides by 5. You can leave it as 49 over 5 if you want. If you want to make it into a mixed number, you can. But you can just leave it as 49 over 5. Guys, I know you see a fraction and you think, oh my gosh, it's so hard to check. It's really not. If I put 49 over 5 right here, what happens to my 5s? They cancel out. So then I have 49 minus 7, which is? 42. So not too bad, not too bad. Okay, again, variables on both sides. So let's move everything. Move to the left. If I subtract 4x, I have 7x minus 4x is 3x, right? Minus 6 equals 9. What do I do with 6? Add it to both sides. Good. So 3x equals 15. Divide both sides by and x equals. Yep. <clears throat> Good, good, good. We're going to do more of these on Monday. Again, variables on both sides. The more we practice, the better we get at this. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. If I have negative 2x and a negative 1x, it gives me negative 3x is good. So I have 8 minus 3x equals 14. What do I do with that positive 8? How did I know it was positive? There's no negative in front of it, so you assume it's positive. So subtract 8 from both sides. I have negative 3x equals 6. Divide both sides by negative 3, and x equals what? Perfect. Good job, guys. Good, good, good. And again, what can we do with all of our answers? Check it. We can know that we're right. <clears throat> okay, I get to this one, and it's a fraction, and we think, oh, man. What number is underneath 2? 1. What would a common denominator be between 3, 2, and 1? 6, right? I can change everything into sixes. So look, just put a big parenthesis here and just multiply everything by six. If I do that, I distribute here, I have six x over three. Distribute here, I have minus six over two equals what? 12 over one, good. Now simplify, what is six divided by three? Okay, so I have two x minus what? Three equals 12. 
Now solve that. Add 3. 2x equals, and then divide by? Perfect. And x equals? 15 over 2. Or, William? 7.5. Perfect. Good. That is fun. I love the way you talk. Common denominator between 2, 3, and 6. 6. <clears throat> if I was going to change this to 6, I would multiply the bottom by what? 2 times what is 6? So if I multiply the bottom by 3, what do I do to the top? Okay. Multiply it by 3. Then I come over here. How would I change 3 to a 6? Times 2. If I multiply the bottom by 2, then I do what to the top? Multiply it by 2. And then 5 over 6 is fine. Once you guys get a common denominator, you can just cross it off. It's fine. So let's distribute this 3. 3 times x is 3x, right? 3 times negative 5. Negative 15. Okay. Minus, what's 2 times 2x? 4x. What's 2 times 5? 10. Equals 5. Once your common denominator is the same, just cross it off. What do I have to do with that minus sign in between the two parentheses? Before I can combine, what do I do? I have to distribute it. So I have 3x minus 15, and then what? Minus negative, or whatever, minus 4x. Minus 10 equals 5. <clears throat> and now what? I know it's Friday morning, guys. Come on. Now what? Well, let's combine like terms first. Okay, negative 15 and negative 10 gives me negative what? Okay. And then what do I do with negative 4x and positive 3x? Okay, so how many x's do I have? And it's what? Negative or positive? Yep. Good. So now what? We're going to add 25 to both sides. Perfect. So I have negative x equals 30. Do we ever leave our variables negative? No. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. x equals negative 30. <clears throat> good, good, good. All right, I have a fraction equal to a fraction. What did we do yesterday when we had a fraction equal to a fraction? Cross, multiply. Guys, this one's going to be a little yucky. That's okay. I'm going to have 2x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. Well, now what do I do? What do I do, Christian? Yep. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 1, negative 2x. Negative 1 times x, negative x. Negative 1 and negative 1, positive 1. Then the other side, I have x times 2x, 2x squared. x times 1, plus x. 1 times 2x, plus 2x. 1 times 1 is 1. Now combine like terms on the left-hand side. 2x squared, what? Minus 3x plus 1 equals, I have 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. <clears throat> now what? Well, we already combined our like terms. Let's try and move everything to one side of the equation. Since it's a quadratic, let's move everything to one side and see if we can factor it. So I'm going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. Well, when I do that, what happens? Oh, they cancel out. All right, we don't have to worry about them anymore. Well, let's move, now let's move the 3x. All right, I'm going to minus 3x from both sides. So what am I left with on the left? Negative 6x, good. And then what do I do? Subtract 1. So I have negative 6x equals 0. Okay, now what? Divide both sides by negative 6 and I get x equals 0. So let's look at this. 
we gotta check to make sure, since we have denominators, we gotta make sure that when I plug in zero, everything's okay. So if I plug in zero here and zero here, and then zero here and zero here, well, what's one over negative one? One, I mean. Negative one, right? And then over here, what's negative one over one? Negative one, so there we go. We did a whole long problem for our answer to just be zero, and it worked, and it was fine. <coughs> that is okay. <clears throat> All right, I want to isolate x. What do I do first? Divide okay, divide both sides by 4. And I look at this, and I say, does 49 divide by 4? No. Now, so I'm going to leave it for a second. Because I still want to get x by itself, so what do I do? Root. Take the square root. If I physically put the square root on and it's an even root, 2, 4, 6, 8, what do I put in front of my answer? Plus or minus. What's the square root of 49? 7. And what's the square root of 4? Perfect. Good job, guys. If you take the fourth root, if you take the sixth root, if you take the square root, you have to put plus or minus. Let's look at 11. First thing I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to add 16. So I get 5x to the 4th equals 16. Okay, now what? Divide by 5. Divide by 5. So I have x to the 4th equals 16 over 5. And take the 4th root. Take the 4th root. When I take the 4th root, what goes in front of my answer? Plus or minus. Okay, what is the 4th root of 16? What times itself 4 times gives me 16? 2. Two. What is the fourth root of five? Decimal. Decimal. Weird. So I just say the fourth root of five. Can I leave it like that? Yeah. We don't like radicals in our denominator. How can I write that so it has a rational exponent? Five to the one say it one more time. Five to the one fourth, five to the one -fourth as a fraction. Good job, Vincente and Hayden. Very good. Remember, this little index becomes our denominator when we move it over. Good. Very good. <clears throat> what about this one? Add okay, we're going to add 15. Actually, yeah, that's fine. So I have 5x cubed equals 15. Now what? Uh, divide, by five. divide by 5. So I have x cubed equals what? Uh, three, three. 3. And then what? Take the cube root. Is that plus or minus? No. No. Do I know what the cube root of 3 is? No. So we just leave it as the cube root of 3. Good. Okay, we're almost done. Here's, we're going to do two of those letter ones. These tend to be the hardest ones for us to do because there's no solution where you get x equals a number. All we're going to do is switch stuff around. We're going to use inverse operations to get, in this case, x all by itself. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? Let me rewrite it so you guys can see this a little better. x plus y divided by 2. <clears throat> what's the first thing I should do? PEMDAS backwards, so subtraction and addition. We gotta get rid of, there's no subtraction and addition we can get rid of yet because I have x plus y over two. I gotta get that fraction to go away. What's the opposite of dividing by two? If I multiply this side by two, then I multiply this side by two, right? Mm -hmm. The twos cancel out. So now I have two a equals x plus y. We're trying to get x all by itself, so what am I gonna do? Subtract, Subtract y. So I have x equals 2a minus y. That's it. I also set it up like this so you guys could see. <clears throat> when we have a fraction equal to a fraction, what did I tell you to do? Cross multiply. Did I pretty much do that? When I multiply both sides by 2, right? If I cross multiply from the beginning, I'd say a times 2 and then x plus y times 1. We got the same thing. All right, let's look at 14. Oh, I didn't tell you what to solve for, did I? 
Whoops. Uh, let's solve for y. No. Yeah, let's solve for y. Okay, so we're trying to solve for y. There's a y here that I can see and a y here. So let's first get rid of the stuff that doesn't have a y. Let's move it to the other side. So what am I going to do first? What doesn't have the y? Which term doesn't have the y? xz. XZ. So let's subtract xz from both sides. So I have v minus xz equals xy plus yz. Now what are we trying to do? We're going to get y by itself. What do you guys notice that both of these terms have? Okay, they, it's multiplication there, but what do they both have in common? They both have a what? What letter do they both have? They both have a y. So can I take it out in front and then rewrite this as x plus z? Yeah, I could do that, right? So if I want to get y by itself, that says y times x plus z. What's the opposite of times x plus z? Divide. divide. So I'm just going to divide both sides by x plus z. So I am left with y equals v minus xz over x plus z. Now, very common mistake. You guys would say, oh, I can cross out my x's and I can cross out my z. You cannot do that because x and y, I mean, x and z are together. They are joined by that plus sign. X and Z are together. They are joined by that minus sign with the V. So you cannot cross anything else out there. It just stays just like that. We'll do more of these on Monday, I promise. <clears throat> All right, let's do this last one. How do I solve this? What do I do? Hmm? Add two. Add two. First step we're going to do is to add two. Good. So we have x plus 2 squared equals 2. Now I can't do anything until I get that square to go away. So what? Take the square root. If I square root, what do I put in front of my answer? So I have x plus 2 equals plus or minus root 2. All right, is x by itself yet? No. Okay, we're almost there. What do I do? Subtract, Subtract 2 from both sides. So how do I write my answer? Uh, negative 2 plus or minus minus. Christian, fantastic. You can write it as negative 2 plus root 2, negative 2 minus root 2, that's fine. But that negative 2 has to go in front. That negative 2 in both cases is negative. The plus or minus stays with the root. Does that make sense? Yes? 